Folks, it's a joy. Somebody say amen. amen. It's a joy to be back, you know, with us for leadership service. Let's be seated. We just want to trust God. He's going to help us through. He's helping us already. He's been doing a great job for us, and we will continue to lift us in Jesus' name. Amen? God is good. Amen? Praise the Lord. Uh, I started sharing with us last week, Wednesday, and I began to talk about the Pauline prayers, and I began to look at what the Apostle Paul was doing in the context of leadership, and I was telling us in the the way that Paul approached leadership and the context of prayer when he spoke and wrote the letters that he wrote, he emphasized that the success or the failure of many Christian endeavors often hinges on prayer. And so that's why that was the direction in which we're going. And tonight, we're going to culminate it. The anointing that we're going to have tonight, it's not so much of any man laying hands on you. Amen? It's not so much of anybody pouring oil on you. But it's going to be more in the context of you in prayer. Somebody say amen. amen. And as you pray, people get anointed when they pray. And so that's the way that we're going to connect with it tonight in Jesus' name. So the success or failure of many Christian endeavors often hinges, like we said, on prayer. Jesus called upon the disciples. He said, pray so that we do not faint. He said, men ought always to pray so that they don't faint, Pastor Hollis. And Paul put it this way. He said, pray without ceasing. So they wanted us to stick with it and stay in, there in that place where we're getting it done. And the reason they were doing it is because prayer works. It works. Whether you believe it or not, whether you think about it that way or not, God shows us that prayer works. I just want to recount some of the stuff that we did last week, just go through them. That's part of what teaching is. You have to recapitulate, bring back so that people can understand, they can flow along with what you have in store. So, amen? So, prayer works. And Paul prayed consistently for the church that he, all the folks that he brought into the kingdom, the, that he connected with, the people that he was leading. And then, to me, if you read all the 13 epistles of the Apostle Paul, Plus, if you want to call the book of Hebrews one of his, uh, because there's, you know, the, there's a big debate amongst church uh, Bible scholars whether the Apostle Paul wrote the book of Hebrews or not. It doesn't matter whether he wrote it or not. It's still in the Bible. Somebody say amen. But when you look at the pattern, you see the context of prayer, how Paul emphasized prayer. You see, we can then tell ourselves that the success of those churches, every single one of those churches that the Apostle Paul dealt with, it was linked to the prayers that he prayed for them. He prayed for them consistently and was able to see success in their lives. He viewed prayer as a warfare that he had to wage. That's the way he saw prayer. He saw it not just as some religious thing that he was doing for them every morning and every evening, but he saw it that it was like a fight. It was like a warfare that he was involved in that he had to bring forth so that these people would succeed. You see him use terminologies like travail in Galatians chapter 4 verse 19, which is really a text scripture where it says, my little children of whom I travail again in birth until Christ be formed in you. So that he used the word travail. He used the word labor. Laboring. You use the word striving. You even use the word conflict. All those things point to the fact that prayer was like a war that he was waging. And if you look at some things, there was what you might call the premise, some of the things that governed him, the attitude that he had, the mindset that he had with which he was praying. There were certain things Paul looked at. Number one was that we said he saw himself as one that was anointed to minister to God's people. And on the premise of that, he prayed for them. Notice in Romans chapter 1, he talked about being able to bring a dream of impartation to them. Notice when he spoke to or wrote to Timothy and he told Timothy on the context, said, listen, the gift that you have that was based upon the laying on of my hands. So he saw himself that way as somebody that was to minister to them. And therefore, he did not abuse his authority. The authority that he had, he saw that authority that he was ordained for their benefit, not to destroy them. He saw himself as a blessing to them. Number two, he saw them as products of God's grace. He didn't see them as a product of his own ingenuity. I'm a wonderful teacher of the word. I'm a tremendous apostle. And that's why you came into the kingdom. No, Paul wasn't looking at it that way. He saw these people as the products of God's grace. So he believed that their growth was actually a grace issue. That God will help them to grow. The same way that God worked for him 
Remember Paul said in 1 Corinthians 15 verse 10, I am what I am by the grace of God. And so he saw these people the same way. That, you know, the same way God helped me, God will help them to be able to stand. Number three is that he believed that there was something worth thanking God for. You know, something about them that was worth thanking God for. You read every single one of the epistles. He will often say, I thank my God always in remembrance of you. I thank my God. I cease not to give thanks, making mention of you in prayer. As you know, he kept bringing it. He told himself there's something worth thanking God for as he relates to these people. A lot of the times when we lead people and we're not getting a lot of results, sometimes it's because we don't see them, you know, we don't see what is there that we can thank God for. We've seen so much that we can complain about, but not anything that we can thank God for. Bob paid specific attention to this. He thanked God. He looked at their areas of strength and one of the things that he did is that he, he told himself that because of all this, what God had put within them, these guys are strong, I've got to be filled with gratitude to God for them. How many times do you take the time to literally give God thanks for the people in your department, the people in your unit, the people that you are leading, the people in your team? How many times do you take that time to say, hey, Father, I want to thank you for their faithfulness. I want to thank you for their loyalty. I want to thank you for them being there one way or the other. Something about them. One of the things I've found is that God, we call God omnipotent. We call him omnipresent. We talk about him as being omniscient. You see, the spirit of thanksgiving, while the Lord is omnipotent, the spirit of thanksgiving for people and on behalf of people will literally draw out what I call their omnipotential. So we have potentials, but based upon God. But as we give God thanks for people, we will see them begin to comfort in that area in Jesus' name. Number four is that he saw that they lacked no good thing. As far as Paul was concerned, these people lacked absolutely no good thing. He was convinced that the redemption that they had in Christ Jesus provided everything that they needed to succeed on earth. He saw them as people that were complete in Christ. If you read Colossians chapter 2, he expected to them that you are complete in him. You know, you know, and that in whom dwelleth the body. How did he put it? All the fullness of the Godhead bodily. He said, we are complete in him. That's the way he saw them. And it, as far as Paul was also concerned, there was nothing on this earth, there was nothing in this world that could stop these people from making it. That's the mindset that the Apostle Paul had. And number five, as we began to you know, tie the thing together, he believed that they were set up by God to bless him. Uh, it's a dangerous thing as a leader. When all you see, and, or put it this way, you don't see the people that you lead as being set up by God to bless you. Sometimes we see the people that we lead that they are set up by the devil to give us headache. You understand what I'm talking about? That, that's where we see them sometimes. Like these people, like the devil set these people in my life just to mess me up. I need you to understand this. The people you're leading are born again. The people you're leading are filled with the Holy Ghost. The people le you're leading are God's children. They could not be set up by the devil to mess you up. If they're God's children, they're saved, they're born again. In many cases, you let them to the Lord. In many cases, you just saw them and you've seen some of the transformations that they've had. You need to come to the place where you tell yourself, this person has been set up by God to bless me. That's the way Paul saw these people. He saw them, that they are there to help him to succeed. That's the way he saw it. And then something, I was sharing this as I was closing last week. I said he maintained what I call the golden rule. The golden rule is never to despise the people of God. No matter the experience you have had with them, don't despise the people of God. You can rebuke them but never despise them. I saw a scripture that I want to share with you today, and I'm sure this scripture will change your life. Run with me quickly to John, Job chapter 36. Job 36, and look at verse 5. Job 36, verse 5. This scripture changed my life. I, I want you to see this. Uh, and and it, look at it. It said, Behold, God is mighty, and despiseth not any. Now watch this. Behold, God is mighty, 
and despised not any. He is mighty in strength and wisdom. Now, if you read it in the King James, the way you're seeing it there, it might not come out to you exactly with the spirit in which this scripture is going. What this scripture is actually saying there, you see how big God is? How great God is? How full of wisdom he is? How mighty he is? And he does not despise anybody. It's like saying, so who is you? You, you understand what I'm talking about? That's really, that's the spirit of this scripture. That's the spirit of this scripture. This scripture is literally telling you, you see how big God is? You know how mighty God is? You know how great God is? And as mighty as he is, he does not despise anybody. So who is you that you despise the people? Who gives you the right to do that? How mighty are you that you're so big on yourself that you think you can despise people? He said, look at how great God is. Look at how wonderful God is. Look at how glorious God is. And he still don't despise nobody. That is a powerful thing that you need to capture. That God doesn't despise people. I want to take a look at this also in Proverbs chapter 28. In verse 16 of Proverbs 28. Look, look at the way that this comes out in here. He said, the prince or king or ruler or governor or leader. You can change that word prince to mean all those things. He said, the prince that wanted understanding is also a great oppressor. What he's saying to you is that the way, one of the ways you see foolishness in manifestation is when people take advantage of other people. They just feel a smartness making them do that. But he's trying to say that that's foolishness gonna mock. He said, the prince or the ruler or the leader that lacks, when he said wanted understanding. You see, when the man is an oppressor, when you see somebody who lacks understanding, one of the manifestations you see is that they are oppressors. They try to oppress the people that they lead. They try to come at the people that they did and take authority over them and mess them up because they lack understanding. Because anybody who has understanding will not oppress the people that they lead. If you have understanding, you are going to be in that place where you help those people succeed rather than put those people down. So that's what that scripture is talking about. So the golden rule, this guy maintained it. Paul maintained it. He didn't despise them. He, that, he talked about that nobody do not despise the body. People die because they did not discern, rightly discern the body of Christ. In 1 Corinthians 11, it tells us, he said people are weak. He said they are weak, they are sickly, and they sleep or die before their time because they do not rightly discern the body of Christ. It's a dangerous thing, the, the way you handle the body of Christ. If you don't rightly discern the body of Christ, it's going to mess you up. And Paul understood that. And as a leader, you need to tap into that and understand that. Now, today we want to wrap this thing up. And this is the direction I want you to go. I want you to think about this. As you begin to look at the Pauline prayers, because many times we wonder what is it that we are to pray for the people that we lead. Child of God, you don't have to know everything that is going on in their home, what's going on on their job, what's going on in their business, in order to pray effectively for them. That's why we have the Pauline prayers. This shows you how Paul prayed for them. You will hardly find clear specific things that have to do with their homes. There was a, there's a mindset with which Paul prayed. So don't tell me they have not revealed anything to me yet. They didn't come to me for counseling to tell me their business so I don't know how to pray for them. No. There are patterns that have been put in place by the Apostle Paul. Patterns that we can follow as leaders in the body of Christ that will help us to effectively pray for the people that we're leading. Now, I want you to look at his style. Look at the style that the Apostle Paul adopted in prayer. Let's look at that's the style, how he was going about the way he prayed for them. Go to Ephesians with me, chapter 1. The style, the focus of his prayer. Look at it from verse 15. He said, wherefore also, I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and the love unto all the saints, cease not, watch, to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers. I want you to follow what he's saying there. That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you, we're in verse 17 already, he said, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. The eyes of your understanding or your heart being enlightened that you may know 
What is the hope of his calling? And what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints? And what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us who believe according to the working of his mighty power which he wrought in Christ Jesus when he raised them from the dead and set him at his own right hand far above in those heavenly places far above principality and power. And that's the kind of pattern with which he was praying for the people. Watch the way he's praying for them. Jump to chapter 3. Look at chapter 3 from verse 14 and just see, just listen first of all in terms of these prayers because this is how the pattern that is being put in place or how you have to pray for the people that you are leading. You don't have to know that, you know, that last week they applied for a job in the Ministry of Health. That is not the issue here. If you handle your prayer like this, it will affect them applying for a job in the Ministry of Health last week. It will deal with all those things. Look at what he said here, Ephesians chapter 3 from verse 14. He said, for this cause I bow my knees unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named. Watch it, it didn't say families, but family in heaven and earth is there. That he will grant unto you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man. Watch this. That Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith that ye being rooted and grounded in love may be able to comprehend with all saints what is the length, the breadth, what is the length, what is the depth, what is the height and to know the love of God that passeth knowledge that you might be filled with all the fullness of God. Then he went on to say now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that you can ask or think of according to his mighty power that is at work within you. That's the pattern that he was praying with. This is the prayers he was praying for all those people. Let me show you another one before we start to unravel with the key things here so they can capture what's in his mind. Look at Philippians chapter 1. Look at verse 3 of Philippians chapter 1. He said, I thank my God upon every remembrance of you. Once I remember you, I start to thank God. Always in prayer, in every prayer of mine, for you all making requests with joy for your fellowship in the gospel from the first day until now. Do you think these folks were not messing up? Do you think these folks never made any mistakes? But this is the attitude that Paul had. He said, being confident of this very thing, that he which had begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. Keep watching, verse 7. Look at all these things. Even as it is meet for me to think of you all, because I have you in my heart, in so much as both in my bones and in the defense and the confirmation of the gospel, ye all are the past partakers of my grace. That's how he saw them. You are partakers of my grace. Look at verse 8. He said, for God is my record. In essence, God bears me witness. How greatly I long after you in the bowels of Jesus Christ. Now look at verse 9 now. And this I pray, that your love may abound yet more and more in knowledge and in all judgment. Look at verse 10. That you may approve things that are excellent and that you may be sincere and without offense till the day of Jesus Christ. Say, child of God, this is how he was praying. Look at Colossians. Look at Colossians chapter 1. And look at verse 3. I'm going through these things so that you begin, I want you to begin to stir you up. So you begin to see how you're supposed to connect with the people that you are leading. He said, we give thanks to God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, praying always for you. Since we heard of your faith in Christ Jesus and the love which you have to all the saints for the hope which is laid up for you in heaven, wherefore you heard before in the word of the truth of the gospel, you so which is come unto you. Jump all the way to verse 9. I was you just see this, you know, because it's similar. For this cause also, since with the way they were heard, we do not cease to pray for you and to desire, desire that you might be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. Child of God, this is how he was seeing them. This is the method. And look at what he was, look at the, the mindset I want you to capture here. Every defect that they had, every deficit, every defect, every shortcoming, he saw those things as prayer points. So if they had a shortcoming, it was a prayer point. It was not a complaint point. It was not a despising point. It was not a destruction point. But it was a prayer point. If there was any kind of defect, if there was, he made their 
defects or their shortcomings prayer points. He really, oh, let me tell you something. Paul wasn't really seeing these defects in them. He was actually more seeing them. It, he, he saw that these things you call defects or shortcomings was based on the fact that they had not gotten a revelation of who they were. They just didn't know what they had. They just were not taking advantage of the what God had put within them. That's the way the Apostle Paul saw it. He wasn't seeing it as they're just stupid. They're just crazy. He was seeing it that I just want them to be able to take advantage of what God has put on the inside of them. That's the way he saw it. That's the attitude that he had. Look at Galatians chapter 1, and you're going to see also Psalm 138 verse 8. Look at Galatians chapter 1 from verse 6 or so. This way, he said, I marvel that you are soon so removed from him that called you into the grace of our Lord Jesus unto another gospel. Now watch it. Watch how he's approaching this, which is not yet another, but there, there are some that trouble you and that would pervert the gospel of Christ. He said, but though we are an angel. Now watch it. Rather than focus on them so much he's turning the thing around and making it look like it, somebody's trying to take you away from what you have he, he wants them to get a revelation of what they have now this thing that you're moving off on something else is because somebody is filling your head with something that is not what you have that you need to come to the place you begin to appreciate what you have look at psalm 138 another one of my favorite scriptures verse 8 of it i love this scripture Yes, it, the Lord will do what? Perfect. How many things? Some of the things. Just a few of the stuff that, you know, affect you. The Lord will perfect that which concerneth me, period. Is there anything that concerns me? God's going to perfect it. Is there anything that affects me, that deals with me? The Lord will perfect it. He said, the Lord will perfect that which concerning me. That mercy, O Lord, endure it forever. You will never forsake the work of thy hands. Child of God, that person that you are leading is a work of God's hands. That person is part of whom God has ordained as a new person generation as a new creature therefore you need to begin to tell yourself if they're under god then god is going to perfect that which concerns him he will perfect everything that concerns them therefore i'm not going to kill out myself i know that god is walking in them that's why he said i've commended you to the lord and i believe that he will perfect that which he has started in you he who begun a good work in you will be able to complete it he will be able to bring it to pass don't tell don't put yourself in the the place where you tell yourself that those guys will not make it. No. Tell yourself God has begun a good work in them. He's going to perfect it. Paul centered on them appreciating the grace that is in their life. That's what he centered on. He centered. He believed all they needed was available. And all these guys needed to do was to recognize them. Remember what we prayed in Ephesians chapter 1? That the Lord will give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened. That you may know what is the hope of his calling. That's how Paul saw it. So his prayers for them was basically for them to get insight. For them to get revelation. Do you think anybody will probably proper revelation of their role and what God is doing in their life will give you trouble as a leader? If the people in your department, the people in your team, the people in your unit, if they catch the vision, if they get an understanding of what God is doing in their life and by extension to ministry, you think they will give you trouble? So what is the real problem? The problem is that they don't have a revelation of it. So what is my prayer then? My prayer now is for them to do what? Get a revelation of it. I know if they can get it. If they can just get it, they're never going to be the same again. If they can get a revelation of it, their life will change. If they can, if they can see what I'm seeing, they will not behave anyhow. Are you understanding what I'm saying? So why am I going to waste my time fighting them and just simply saying, why are you behaving like that? When I can zero in, in the spirit, and believe God for them to see what I am seeing. Because if they can see it, they'll run with it. They'll run with it. They'll flow with it. And so that's what Paul was praying. That they'll get insight. They'll get revelation. They'll walk in that place where they can be all that God has called them to be. He also focused on them appreciating one another. You see, when believers are fighting each other in the body, you know what is the manifestation of? They don't have a revelation of what God is doing in one another. 
they, they don't. That, that's the only reason they're fighting each other. They need, you see, let me say something to you. You could never appreciate the fullness of God on your own. You can't. I don't care how long you're born again for. I don't care how much of God, how much of the Bible you've read, or how many times you've read it. You can never. You see, I use the word never. Never. No, at any point in time, you will never appreciate the fullness of God while you walk on this earth on your own. It's not possible. It's not possible. Go to Ephesians chapter 3 again. Take a look at it from verse 16. And look at what Paul said. Look at how Paul prayed. Ephesians 3 from 16. He said that he will grant you according to the riches of his glory, to be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man. For what? Why? That Christ may dwell in your heart by faith, that ye being rooted and grounded in love, may be able to comprehend with all saints, with all saints. You can't comprehend it on your own. You'll be able to comprehend with all saints. What is the breadth? What is the length? What is the depth? And what is the height? And to know the love of God, that passeth knowledge, that you might be filled with the fullness of God. Because listen to me, there's a dimension of God that Deacon Charmaine is carrying that I'm not carrying. That's why there are certain things in the Bible that the Bible said, and some he gave. It's not everything that the Bible said, and all he gave. There are certain things the Bible says, and some he gave. Amen. Are you following what I'm saying? That means how can I get that peace that was given to that, that other person unless I connect to the person? <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? Because it is some he gave. But he gave those some for all. So if we don't connect, then we can't get it. That's why Paul was talking to the folks in Corinth and he said, you guys are behaving like children. You're behaving like babes, not even like children. When one says, I'm for Paul, I'm for this and I'm for that, he said, don't you realize what you're doing to yourself? He said, all things are yours. Whether Paul, whether Apostle, whether this and so on and so forth, all things are yours. And you need to capture because the only way you can flow in this thing is by embracing all. So you can't try to play, and, you know, play alone and try to think that you're going to make it in God. Number two thing that you, I want you to see in terms of what Paul was doing, which is so interesting, his prayers were for them to be established. All those prayers that we were reading, he was just talking about them being established. Not for them to give him more money, but for them to be established. <laughs> you know, if I'm praying for Pastor Neves to give me more money, waste of time. If he's established, he'll give me more money. So, yeah. See different? Did you capture it? So, my focus is different. That focus is for him to be established. If he's scrunting, he will give me more money. So, if he's scrunting and all I'm saying, Father, let the, can't you, can't, why can't see to give me money? But he's scrunting. You understand what I'm talking about? So if he's not scrunted, you know, he'll be able to handle So my job is to pray for him to be established. You find what I'm saying? He's established in Christ. Look at Romans chapter 1. Take a look at it from verse 10. That's what Paul was praying. Paul was convinced. He was totally convinced that his prayers will lead them into the place where they'll be perfected in Christ. Look at what he said. He said, making requests, if by any means now, at length, I might have a prosperous journey by the will of God to come unto you. Look at verse 11. For I long to see you, that I may impart unto you some spiritual gift to the end that ye may be established. That was his focus, that they will be established, that they will be strong in God, that the purpose of God will be fulfilled in their lives. Are you following me? It is, that's the way that their potential was going to be maximized. Let me say something to you. If these people are established and all of us are established and so on and so forth, if we really believe what Paul prayed for these people and connect with the same way, there is no way we are not going to get the same result. Rather than stay complaining, we will comply with the prayer pattern and therefore we'll get results. That's why I wrote there, I said, if we believe the same thing, we will do more complying with the prayer model rather than complaining about the people that we're leading. And the last thing I wanted you to see before we close is that don't let the people derail you. This is so important from your destiny. Don't let people derail you from your destiny. And one of the key ways to ensure that people do not derail you from your destiny is to pray for them. Not to avoid them, because you're the one leading them. How are you going to avoid them? 
hide and run away from them and you are the one leading them. So the only way that you're going to get them to stop and not derail you from your destiny is to pray for them. Because if you don't pray for them and you go on taking them on in different ways, they will derail you from your destiny. There are too many leaders today that have gone off track. And it was the people that they were leading that derailed them from their destiny. Their attitude to the people. I need you to always remember, no matter how large the mob is, there is a leader. Do you hear me? I said again. No matter how large the mob is, somebody leading. And that person that is leading, trust me, their will overrides the entire mob. The mob is going in that direction because they are leading the mob. Their wheel is so it's important for you to begin to realize how important your role is. Many leaders don't understand how important their role is. You, we operate as though the people lead us. So we blame them for lack of success. We blame them for lack of progress. We blame them for things not working out. Who exactly is leading who? You know, John Maxwell said everything rises and falls on leadership. Are you understanding what I'm talking about? Uh, now, now, he does not necessarily mean that the leader is to blame per se for every single thing. But what he's saying is that leadership is to blame. Leadership could be that the leader has released leadership to somebody that is not the leader. Leadership, what is co with the context of leadership is always to blame. For every single thing that is happening. The context of leadership. That leadership could have been that we have decided to have a cabal, some clique, that we have allowed in place. None of them is the president. None of them is the secretary. None of them is the PRO. But they run things. So it rises and falls on them. So he's not really saying that it rises and falls on past Egypt. No. It rises and falls on whatever it is that we have accepted as the leading. It rises and falls on that. That's the context in which you ought to see it. So in dealing with people, there are certain important things that you need to have as I tie this thing together. Number one, you don't owe anybody a natural explanation for everything you're doing. Now, I want you to capture this. I used to say it this way before, and my wife used to tell me, no, 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 you can't say that. I used to say I don't owe anybody any explanation. I just simply owe them an education. You understand what I'm saying? That's the way I used to say it. But I've kind of adjusted it because, you see, I can't be married to a woman who tells me, no, 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 there must be something she's seeing that I'm not seeing. So I went and I meditated on it more, and therefore I switched it a little bit. <laughs> I switched it a little bit. So I don't say it exactly the same way I used to say it. So now, this is the new way I'm saying it. I'm sure this one will sit well with her. You don't owe anyone a natural, inverted commas, explanation for everything you do. That one sounds better. You like that one? Okay, good. She says she, she thumbs up on that one. Somebody say amen. You don't want anybody. You see, part of the problem in leadership is that you want to be able to explain every single thing you are doing to people. It's a lie. You don't need to. You don't need to. You do not need to. Turn to somebody and say, you don't need to be able to explain naturally every single thing that you're doing. You don't need to. You don't need to. Too many times, the reason we are not moving forward as leaders is that we spend too much time trying to explain every single thing to everybody. By the time they eventually get it, that thing is obsolete. We don't need it again. No, you didn't hear me. You heard what I just said, Pastor Jared? I said, by the time all of them get it, it's obsolete. And therefore, you don't need that thing anymore. So that thing is useless to you. You have to understand that you are the leader. They've not been where you are. You are the one clearing the path. Are you getting what I'm talking about? They cannot be trying to hinder you in terms of where you are. You are the one going ahead of them. Bible says raise a standard. If they were the ones to raise the standard, then God wouldn't be instructing you as the leader to raise the standard. They need to be led. No, you didn't hear me. I said it again. I said they need to be led. It is part of their need. So you need to take the leadership mantle and take it on. Paul was convinced about this. You owe, do, do not owe them any natural explanation. How do you think Moses was going to explain to everybody? You see, when we take blood, God said, put blood on the doorposts and every first son in this building will not die. 
How do you think he's going to explain that naturally? Where's the natural explanation for such a thing? Are you following what I'm talking about? What's the natural explanation? That Jesus had five loaves of bread and two fishes. He gives thanks for five loaves of bread and two fishes and gives it to 12 men and tells them, go and give the people. When do you think he will have the time to fully explain that whole phenomenon for them in order for them to do it? You need to understand that leadership is by faith. In 1 Corinthians chapter 2, let me say, you need to understand this. 1 Corinthians 2 from verse 9. He said, I have not seen, ear had not heard, neither has it entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for them that love him. He said, verse 10 tells you. He said, but God has revealed them unto us by his spirit. For the spirit searcheth all things, yea, the deep things of God. For no man knoweth the things of a man, save the spirit of the man that is in him. Also no man knoweth the things of God, save the spirit of God. The crucial verse that I want you to see is verse 12. Look at it. It said, now we have received, not the spirit that is of this world, but the spirit which is of God, that we may know the things that are freely given to us. Keep going. Verse 14 is actually the verse I was going to. Which things also we speak, not in words which man's wisdom teaches, but which the Holy Ghost teaches, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. But the natural man receiveth not the things of the spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. You do not owe any man natural explanation for everything that you're doing. What you owe them is to pray for them. Neither do you need their permission for everything you have to do. You don't need their permission for it. That is the problem. The church is not a democratic organization. It is not an autocratic organization either. It is a theocratic organization. So we move on the premise of the leading of the Holy Ghost. You don't owe them everything. You don't owe them all that. You owe them prayer. That's what you owe them. You owe them prayer. So before you pass things across to them, take time to pray for them and believe God that they will get it. It's not everything that you can naturally explain. Believe God that they will connect in the spirit. You can't explain everything naturally. I don't know how I'm going to tell the children of Israel with a rod in my hand, do fear not. The rod of God is in my hand. I raise the rod, and then the sea opened. Even them jokers that are there making noise, after that sea was open, you think it's easy for them to jump inside? <laughs> Something had to be done by faith. And they were going to do that whole night they are crossing that. You watch a simple Ten Commandments movie, and in three minutes they were crossed. No, it was whole night they were crossing through that. You think you could explain that naturally to them? No, it's not going to happen. What you owe them is prayer. This will help them get insight that they need. Your prayer, as far as I'm concerned, is a reflection of your love for them. Bible said, owe oh, no man nothing except to love them. It is in your prayer you reflect your love. The owing, what you owe them is love. And what you owe them, you're manifested through your prayer for them. If you waste your time always trying to explain every single thing to the people that you lead, you will be doing them something bad. You will not be helping them. As long as Moses prayed for the people, he stayed pleasing to God. When he got mad with them, he missed his destiny. The problem is that you're trying to explain everything to them and they are not getting it. They are not the leader. You are the one that is the head. So sometimes they appear headless because you are their head. So once you understand it, move forward. Somebody say amen. amen. No, you didn't hear me. as well. I'm talking about. I said you are the one that is their head. Once you understand it, move forward. Because if you're trying to make sure that they understand every single thing and the, the denseness that to you they are demonstrating will make you mad. And when you get mad at them, you will displease God. They are God's people. You need to be careful how you deal with them. When you start to look at them as shepherd and crazy and don't see people, God has you as an, on his number. You will miss your destiny. Therefore, Moses never got into the promised land. It was getting mad at the people of God who were playing dance. That's how he missed his destiny. 
Did you understand what I'm talking about? Don't let nobody make you miss your destiny because they're moving dense. Just tell yourself, I the head. I understand it. I good enough. That's good enough. I the head. I understand what I'm doing. That's good enough. Because if I wait for you to totally understand everything, by the time I'm waiting, I'm going to get mad at you. I'm going to curse you and I'm going to miss God. I'm going to curse you and I'm going to miss God. I tell you flat. But I will curse you. Somebody say, oh, but you're born again. Listen to me. I don't think you're understanding. When you're trying to explain certain things to certain types of people, and when you are there, you will curse somebody and you're going to miss God. That will happen to Moses. God. Just tell yourself, I is the head. I get it, so let me go. <laughs> Are you still with me? When Saul and Aaron stayed with God on their behalf, they pleased God. The moment they started to fraternize with the people in certain ways, they missed God. So you can't, there are two things you don't do. You don't go off on one end getting mad at them. You don't go off on the other end fraternizing with everybody. You don't go off on either end. You're going to miss God. On each side, you will miss God. You don't need it. It's not going to help you. You can go and read. You see, it was, it was a leader that built the golden calf, you know. But that leader built the golden calf because the people said, that's what we want. So the question is, who is the leader? <laughs> who is leading who? It was a man who was supposed to burn up everything that God told him to do, that decided not to do that, you know. Why did he do it? Say because the people say, so who is the leader? Any question you have to ask yourself? Who is the leader? Bishop would have done it, you know, but all the people did not understand. Who tell you that all the people will understand anything that you're going to do? For those who don't understand, remember you is the head. You understand it, move forward. Somebody say amen. You need to protect your destiny and their destiny. Protect your destiny and protect their destiny by interceding for them. Through our prayers, they can manifest all that God has called them to be. They can manifest who they are in Christ. They can manifest what they have in Christ. They can manifest what they can do in Christ. So stand up on your feet. This is the time for the anointing. The anointing is not me pouring oil on you today. The anointing is not me laying hands on you today. The anointing today is you praying for the people that God has put under you. And as you are praying for them, the power of God will fall on them. The power of God will follow you. Somebody say amen. I said the power of God will fall on them. The power of God will follow you. Put up Ephesians chapter 1. From verse 16. Now I want you to remember the people that you're leading. Those of you, if you look around and some of your departments that you have your leaders together, I want you to come together. Music ministry can come across on this side and all that. Thank God Bishop has two of his people here. In fact, that is it. Are you covered? Say amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Those of you that have some of your departments here, just connect with your people. And I want you to begin to lift this prayer. Believers Foundation. I see some of you together. And want, some of, somebody will say, but Bishop, I belong to 10 departments. Choose one. <laughs> Choose one and be there. So now here's what we're going to do. We're going to lift prayer. Up. We're going to pray for the people that we are leading. Somebody say, I belong to New Department. Join one. Join some people. Don't stay alone. You're going to be with some people. I know we have social distancing and all that. This is spiritual coming together. Instancing, it will help us. Okay. Cease not to give thanks for you. Making mention of you in my prayers. What's the, what's the prayer? That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of you. Begin the Lord of him. Begin to pray for the people that God has put in your charge. The people that God has enabled you to lead. Begin to pray for them now. That God will give them the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. They will know what God has called them to do. They will understand their role in the body of Christ. They will begin to connect with what God has called them to do. God 
brought them to this ministry. God brought them to your department. God brought them to your unit. God brought them to wherever it is that the kind area of leadership, your team, God brought them there. Now I want you to begin to believe God that God will open their eyes of understanding. They'll begin to appreciate what God has called them to do. They begin to walk in it. If there is any one of them that moves kind of dense, that is always making you upset, call their name and say, Father, help brother so and so, that his eyes of understanding will be enlightened. If the brother, sister so and so, that the eyes of our understanding will be enlightened. She'll walk with you. She'll flow with you. She will grow in you. Your purpose shall be fulfilled in her life. She will know what is the hope of her calling. Begin to believe God that these people will connect with the vision. That they will connect with that which God has called you to do. That the vision will ever be before them. And they'll be able to run with it in the name of Jesus because understanding is coming unto them. A respect of that vision that God has given to the house. Oh glory be to God. Look at your department. What you are called to do there. Look at your unit. What you are called to do there. Look at your team. What it stands for. That vision that these people will connect with it. They will connect with the plan of God. They will know what is the hope of their calling. They will walk in the light of it. The glory of God shall be evident upon them. They will do that which they ought to do in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Pray. Pray for them especially in the spirit. For those of you that are watching us online, those of you that are pastors, leaders, begin to pray for the people that you lead at this time. That they will connect with the vision. They will connect with God's purpose. They will connect with what God has called you to do. There will not be people that will pull the vision down. There will not be destroyers of the vision. It is without a vision that people perish. It is not with a vision. When there is a vision, then people connect in life. They will be able to flow with the life of God that he has put within the thing that God called you to walk in. In the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you. Makuri me, mapoye keteria, la zopa tende, la giri montosi, matuke paseaka, and reko tosi kete, maduke peyente kasoka prade, la karinde kedele mashote. Put up Philippians chapter 1, verse 9. Philippians. And this I pray, that your love may abound. Yet more and more in knowledge and in judgment. Begin to pray for them at this time. There are people that the devil has been trying to use to cause discouragement, to cause division in the different units, in the different departments, in different ministries. And so begin to believe God for the people of God that their love may abound. Yet more and more in knowledge and in judgment. They are not going to allow anything to derail them. They will have solid understanding that will cause them to walk in love. They will have understanding that will cause them to walk in that which God has called them to operate in. They will have the understanding that will cause them to discern appropriately in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Believe God for them. Maparike teserama, mandori makate. No division, no division. Mapurimende, masakaye, mantropa sikete, like renda la mamandoya. Every single time that something comes to cause misunderstanding, begin to believe God that God will give the kind of understanding that will cause the people to walk together in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. There'll be a oneness, a yearning to flow together as one, a yearning to walk together as one, a yearning to be in that place that they have one mind in the name of the Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Take a look at verse 10. Take a look at verse 
that ye may approve things that are excellent that ye may be sincere and without offense till the day of Christ begin to believe God for the people that you lead that they will approve things that are excellent they will not operate in mediocrity they will not operate it just anyhow but they will walk in excellence they will approve things that are excellent they will be sincere they will operate in integrity they will not be folks that will be in there just offended because somebody brings correction they will be able to receive correction they are not going to operate in the spirit of offense begin to pray that there will be a desire to be better a desire to extend into greater things a desire to stand out for the honor and for the glory of God that they will approve things that are excellent believe God that your people will be strong in this they will approve things that are excellent they will walk with God there will be a desire to be better there will be a desire to be better they will not just be average they will see themselves as excellent people they will see themselves I can do more, I can do better I can do greater, there's something more, there's more that is available, they can stretch themselves into that in the name of Jesus Christ we believe God for them now look at verse look at verse 11 being filled with the fruits of righteousness which are by Jesus Christ unto the glory and the praise of God begin to pray for them that they'll manifest the fruit of the spirit they'll manifest love they'll manifest joy they'll manifest peace they'll manifest long suffering gentleness they'll manifest those things self-control they'll manifest faithfulness begin to, to, to begin to connect with them on that that they will be able to make the, the they'll manifest those fruits of righteousness they'll manifest the peace of god they'll manifest the things that will cause the glory of god to be evident they'll manifest the spirit of god walking on the inside of them will cause them to bear the fruit of the spirit bible said that those that are planted in the house of the lord they will bear fruit begin to talk to god that these people will bear fruit fruit of repentance works of repentance will be evident in them they will not be the same that they've been before they will operate as the new man that god has called them to be they will not function as the old man they are no longer the natural man they are the spiritual man that god has made a new creature all things have passed away they will not continue to think the way that they used to think but god will walk with them they will bear the fruit of righteousness they will walk in supernatural quietness they will walk in supernatural peace they will walk in that which will bring honor that that which will bring glory to almighty god Begin to pray for them that will walk worthy of the Lord. Colossians 1:10 unto all pleasing they will walk worthy of the lord unto all pleasing or walk worthy of the lord unto all pleasing they will walk worthy of the lord god has made us worthy now begin to pray that we will walk worthy of the lord unto all pleasing we'll do that that will bring god honor we'll walk in that way that god will be pleased Punte kate, let terin katadea, mato posi kete, landre nenemo, mande koshi de le motoria, la sadi de koshi de demo. Now begin to pray for yourself. Now begin to talk to God. Say, Father, help me to see you in there. 
Help me, O oh God, to have something that I can give you thanks for in their life. Help me, O oh God, open my own eyes of understanding that every time I see them, every time I think of them, I'll have a reason to praise you. I'll have a reason to thank you. Every time I see them, every time I bounce up with them, every time I connect with them, that I'll have a reason to praise you. Lord, help me. Lord, help my understanding. Lord, help me, O oh God. Lord, help me, O oh God, that I'll be able to walk in this spiritual reality that these are your children, that you have set them up for good works, even that you have ordained for a long time. Before I even came on the scene, you already set them up to do good works. Lord, we trust you that they are your workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which are beforehand ordained that they should walk in it. Help me to see that. Help me to understand that. Help me to see that I am a blessing to them. Help me to see that you have anointed me as their leader and therefore you have given me what it takes to take them to the next level. Father, help me to see that. Help me to see that you have put within me the capacity. You have put within me the ability to move this thing to the next place. Not because of my mind. Not because of my power. But because of your spirit. Begin to pray for yourself along that line. That God is walking with you to advance the cause of the kingdom through these people. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. Build up yourself on your most holy faith. Ma puke pesikati zestinga dalimo. Ma bringe delikasea le sante sigo torimo. Ma kai ketele desta kadea le grondolo mozinge dele mezekaye aderi moso kapatea le grondolo masanga tadi beche keteriye le zobandi ke yeboto sekete zazi tele mende kosoto ma si prekete stia le ngeta steka le koshopa dinte sete the Kali Prodo Shekete, Mazu Prangate, Mantosa Katea, Le Credoshta and the Kastepoto. Now begin to see them again. Now trust God. You prayed for God to open your eyes. Now, as God opens your eyes, now begin to thank God for what you're seeing in them. Begin to thank God. Not what you're seeing that they will be, not what you are seeing that they could do. I want you to just look back. And God has shown you some things. Begin to thank God that irrespective of everything, sister so-and-so still shows up. Begin to thank God. Irrespective of everything, brother so-and-so still shows up. Irrespective of losing their job, they are still doing such and such and such. Irrespective of whatever, begin to thank God for them. Begin to see specific things that these folks have been involved in. Begin to see stuff that they are doing, how they are yielding themselves, how they are connecting and seeing God walk in them. Begin to just thank God for them. Begin to bless the Lord. Lord for them. Mama Yakadele Besekete. Thank the Lord for what they are doing, irrespective of the things that they have to deal with. Thank the Lord for them. Thank the Lord for them. I want more prayer. Pray. I want you to pray. Now begin to pray. Take authority over every enemy of their soul. Every walker of iniquity, the Bible said, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, wicked spirits in heavenly places, every satanic force that is trying to hinder them from fulfilling the plan of God for their lives. Take authority over those things. Pray for their family, that their children will stand strong. Some of them are distracted because their children are not behaving well. Some of them are distracted because they are business are not in place so pray for their business pray for their children pray for what concerns them pray for their job pray for them in different things that affect them as they move into the marketplace the things that seem to impact on them that make it difficult for them to flow the way they ought to flow the things that seem to distract them i want to believe god to take authority over those things begin to declare relief begin to believe god in some cases there are needs that they have they've been praying for certain things and those things have not come to pass join them in faith join them in prayer help them lift the load in the name of Jesus the Bible said bear ye one another's burdens lift with them 
carry with them today in the name of Jesus they've been designed to be your blessing carry with them as you carry with them so shall they carry with you our people are doing better in the name of Jesus declare it declare it declare it declare it declare it that every hindrance is removed declare it that the powers of darkness are broken declare it that the purpose of God is fulfilled in their lives, declare that they're strengthened by might by the Spirit of God on the inside of them, that they're being grounded, they're being rooted in love, they're coming to an understanding of all the breadth, the length, the depth, the height to know the love of God, that pass the knowledge for God is working with them to make it happen in the name of our Lord Jesus. Oh, glory be to God! Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Now I want you to pray a prayer of consecration and dedication with a realm of loyalty intent. Father, I thank you for these people. I rather nobody else. These ones that you gave me, I rather nobody else. They are the ones you gave them to me. I appreciate you. I appreciate you for them. I appreciate you for that. Begin to thank God now. We're going to thank God in that way. Uh, it's, it's a dedication. It's also loyalty from your own side. You are saying, God, you didn't make a mistake. You gave these people to me. You did not make a mistake. Jesus did not complain. Even though Judas was in the midst. Jesus did not complain. He was still excited. Knowing fully well that Peter was going to deny him. Jesus did not complain. God knew fully well all the stuff that David David did and he still said you're a man after my heart I want you to begin to thank God after every rubbish that Israel did and people criticize God for choosing Israel God said I will yet choose Jerusalem I will yet choose this people talk to God and let God know that this is your heart let him connect with it appreciate him for these people father I will yet choose these ones that you have given to me I will not go searching for anybody else. I will choose these ones. These ones that you have connected me with, I will choose them again and again and again. Talk to God. You know more than I know. You know why you brought them around me. You know more than I know. You know why you put them around me. You are the sovereign God. I bow to your sovereignty. I I worship your sovereignty and I thank you oh God we give you praise for them in the name of the Lord Jesus thank the Lord thank the Lord for the people that he has surrounded you with thank the Lord don't get into the mode of regret don't get into the mode I wish I had somebody else I wish I had the no 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 that's not your portion thank God for the people that he has blessed you with in the name of the Lord Jesus thank you Lord Anybody blessed tonight? Yes. Anybody blessed tonight? Yes. Our anointing is not based upon feeling it, but I feel the anointing. <laughs> Somebody say amen. It's not based on feeling it, but I feel the anointing. <laughs> Somebody say amen. It's not, it's not because we feel it, but we feel the anointing. So you're anointed. You're anointed to lead well. You're anointed to lead well. You are anointed to minister better to the people. You are anointed not to be down. You are anointed not to feel grieved by whatever it is that goes on. You are anointed to walk in the context of the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God is not just meat and drink, the Bible says, but it is righteousness. It is peace. It is joy in the Holy Ghost. May God help you to walk in it. May God help you to express his righteousness. May he help you to walk in peace. May he help you to walk in joy in Jesus mighty name and everybody says Amen, Amen.